Yeah, guys. Talking about Neo stock and what people don't think about, really, about Neo stock. Um, market should be open today, later on, but it's um, yeah, six coming up to twenty-five minutes past six a.m., guys. Um, market should be open today. It was Thanksgiving yesterday. But let's talk about Neo stock, guys. What people, what people don't think about, you know, and that is that when they talk about losses, you know, the, the Neo, they got, you know, <laughs> it's a startup, isn't it? More or less, you know what I mean? Like any startup, they have losses. The company's only been around for ten years. But obviously, like they've had their ups and downs, you know, to get to get into full swing, to get into full full speed ahead. And obviously, it's um, it's a process, and through that process, progression is made. But obviously, you know, manufacturing cars manufacturing EVs it's uh and, and and you know the numbers they they want to sell obviously it costs money right but the money that it has been costing they're not losses they're investments that's what people people forget right that when they spend x amount on each you know battery swapping station that's not a loss that's an investment because in the future when you've got like a hundred thousand two hundred thousand half a million a million two million five million neo evs on the road using the battery swapping service those battery swapping stations will be making money for for Neo for the company, right? Then you've got to think about, well, it's not just battery swapping stations for Neo. Those battery swapping stations, if Neo partner or if other companies partner with Neo, those battery swapping stations could be making money for Neo through third parties using using um, those battery swapping stations so there's that possibility as well right there's that possibility as well because such a huge network with you know so many just all over the place battery swapping stations why would you reinvent the wheel? No other company would go and spend, you know, so much money to have their own battery swapping stations when all they've got to do is partner with Neo. And to do that, all they'd have to do is, is you know, basically have the same design as Neo, where the batteries can be swapped. And obviously, like there might be some licenses involved where they have to pay Neo, and that's another way Neo can make money. Where they have to pay Neo, you know, maybe for the license or some technology or whatever. But can you imagine that these investments moving forward, you know, into 2025, 2026, up to 2030 and beyond? Can you imagine how much Neo can make just from the battery swapping stations? You know the cost of fuel and you know like energy people need to, you know, on the move. Obviously people need to change the batteries, right? So all, all the money, all every time someone changes the battery they pay neo or they pay on a monthly basis 
doesn't matter. One way or the other, it's going to cost. It's going to cost the consumer, right? It's going to cost the EV maker, uh, the EV user, right? The driver. It's going to cost the driver or the owner, right? Of the of the vehicles, and then obviously extras, you know, beverages, food, right? Connected with the battery swapping stations, more profits. So people talk a lot about the company losing money. It's not profitable. When will it become profitable? But can you imagine, like, if there was a McDonald's and they hadn't sold, you know, one burger and they were setting up all these shops, but you know, all these stores, drive throughs and, you know, these restaurants and spending a lot of money, you know, setting them up. And obviously they'll be losing money, right? They'll be losing money. They won't be profitable. But that's the investment, isn't it? Once you build it, they will come. So basically, basically, once you build it, yeah, once you build it, the, the, the customers will come, right? So that's the point, guys. I want to, you know, I basically want to say that's the point that these, when they talk about losses, the company, when they talk about losses, it's not, it's not, um, you know, short term, short term losses, right? It's invest they're investments they're not really losses although you know you can see it like both ways they're not really you know losses for the long term it's an investment all those like what you call losses they will come good they will basically you know be turn into profit so you know, people expect too much too soon. You know, Tesla, Tesla didn't, you know, make profit just like that. It took time. And you know what? You know what? Like people, if you do your research, right? There were analysts saying, right? There were analysts saying that, oh, you know, Tesla's no good at the time, right? At the time before they become, you know, profitable. They were saying, Tesla's no good and all this and that. They're losing money. They're not profitable, etc., etc., etc. And then, as you know, you know, when they did become profitable, so, you know, you know the stock price, you know the story, right? But there were analysts, right? So-called, you know, pros, like analysts, whatever. Obviously, there were some analysts saying, Look, it takes time to, you know, become profitable and there's going to be losses. Because that's what you're going to hear. They're not making any money. They're not making any money. They're not making any money. But that's what you're hearing now, right? You're hearing that Neo's not making any money. Neo's not making any money. So you've got people that they, maybe they got stock. Maybe they bought stock at a higher price they're losing or maybe the worst types right of call them can't call them investors right because they're so short term so short minded right call them like more or less day traders they think that they're investors but they're kind of like half a day traders right they think that Neo's going to go to the moon like if they just because they invest or you know because they put money in they think Neo's going to go to the moon or it should go to the moon because they've put their money in, right? But those kinds of people, they basically, they're the worst kind, right? As I was saying, they're the worst kind because they, they bash, you know, they lose a little bit of money. They could be 10, 20% down, 15%, even 5%, right? Even 5%, they could be, even 3%, they could be 3% down 
and they they they, they turn nasty, right? They get like upset, really upset, and they bash the company. They bash they bash the stock, and if you, truth be known, they've hardly got any money in it, right? They've hardly got any. They've hardly put any money, and they might have put like a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars, you know, that that kind of that amount, right? And they and as I said, right, they think because they've um because they've uh, invested or you know put money in, it should go up immediately because they're some kind of like spirit, you know, they're some kind of um, you know the universe, you know. They're the centre of the universe, basically. Anything they do, it's got to come good. Otherwise, it's, it's everyone else's fault, right? So, that's the thing. It's all about them. More so, more or less, right? That's what you're hearing. When you're reading comments on... I don't know, Facebook, Reddit, right? Um, or trading platforms, um, on stock tweets, Yahoo conversations. A lot of them, when you when you read comments, like they're bashing it, bashing it, bashing Neo, right? No, Neo's no good, Neo's not profitable, etc., etc., right? That is is as I said because of those kind of people they got a few hundred dollars and they thought just because they bought in it, it should go up right but it's like anything right if you plant um, an orange tree or a grape you know grapevine whatever you don't expect the fruits do you you don't expect the fruits the next day you know what I mean it's not a magic, um, what do they call it? Beans, you know. It's not a magic bean stalk or tree or whatever they call it. So, that's it, guys. Like, when you listen to them bashing, bashing, um, you know, basically bashing um, Neo, you know what kinds of people they are. You know what kinds of people. Right? And that's it. So, point is that you've got to let, let things take its course. Let, allow it to become profitable, however long that takes. Uh, some people are talking about 2026 the end of 2026 right which is two years just over two years right but i think that even if that was the case i think that there'll be um a point where i mean we've seen some indicators right we've seen the potential like you saw, you saw neo stock go to 770 if you if you if you go back prior to when the stock rose you know to $67 if you go back and you analyze the chart the price action of neo stock and then you join it up with what's happened after it you know came all the way down you can see really that neo has been holding up it's not really fallen. Um, it's more or less, if you if you analyze it, right, taking away that pump, right, to $67. If you remove that pump, Neo really is a growth stock. It's slowly, slowly, but you can't notice it. It's so subtle. But if you actually analyze the chart, you can actually, you know, if you do the maths, you can actually see it, right? It can become apparent that it's actually growing, but it's ever so slow. Even even though it might it might dip down sometimes, you know, it goes down three three seventy five, you know, dollars and so on. If you actually analyze the price action, 
it's actually growing but ever so slightly but it's more more so moving sideways which is which is actually it's actually a good sign it's actually a good sign because part of me was thinking you know i don't like it when stocks you know when you see this big rise and then they fall and then i don't like that that, that kind of price action i don't like looking at those kind of charts right but you've got to bear in mind that this is a, was a it was a unique situation, like COVID. You know what happened? It was like when, when, when has that happened before? You know, it's never happened, right? So it's not just Neo that got affected by that, right? Because there was a lot of money, you know, going around, you know, in the stocks and so on. So that it wasn't just Neo that it was loads of loads of like stocks that that happened to so all their charts are going to show similar similar things you know similar pumps similar price actions but if you if you disregard that right if you disregard it then really neo is not really taken off it's moved sideways slowly slowly going up right but it's a good sign because it's not made a move yet. And don't forget that it's only been on the stock market for six years, right? The company's only been around for 10 years. It's only been on the stock market for six years. Six years is not a long time. Six years could seem like a lifetime, you know. You think oh yeah well if i invest now and six years later like there's no stocks not taken off i won't want to put my money in that kind of stock i know what you're saying but in terms of like setting up you know a company in a global ev company six years is not a long time right especially when you've got to make a huge investment in battery swapping stations and the technology and ai you know, and the nanobots, uh, not nanobots, you know, the nanometers and um, all this, you know, it takes money, right? Raising money it takes investment, right? So, as I say, like, they're not, it's not loss, right? It's investment and that investment takes time to, to come good, right? takes time to come good you don't expect results overnight and six years is not a long time it's not a long time right there's hurdles along the way there's obviously there's always sort of problems along the way um so if you you know if you think about it right if you want a an ev company for the next you know 20 30 40 years or whatever right it's going to take time to establish. It's going to take time to set up. You're talking tens of thousands of vehicles, right? You need that network. You need the battery swapping stations. You need the AI in place, right? To control what's going on on the network. And that is obviously a big expense. But that expense is an investment. So... We should start to see the chart, in my opinion, it's not financial advice, but we should start to see the chart move up sometime, I think, in 2025, right? Probably midway, around about June, July 2025. We should see it start to make steady gains, right? Steady gains. That's what I'm thinking, right? So, if you just bought in, for example, right? If you just bought in now, then it's not a long time you're waiting, is it? If you're waiting six months, one year, it's not a long time. Obviously, like, if you bought in right at the beginning, 2018, you probably, you're in profit anyway. You probably would have sold when it went up to $67 or, or if you hadn't sold all of it, you would have sold most of it and kept some, you know, obviously kept some stock 
but obviously like you're probably losing on that bit that you've kept because you probably would have paid a higher price but if you think about it right for people coming in now just over four dollars then it's nothing is it like if you think about you've seen it already doubled more or less right a few weeks back just like that doubled just like that right when you when you think about it right crypto was down for like two years before it doubled plus right it took two years to make a move it didn't double at all it was just like it was like a stagnated uh you know like a stagnated puddle it wasn't moving anywhere but you see Neo made a move, right? Just like out of the blue, right? Doubled. And um, that's what I want to say. Basically, obviously it can happen again, but I think that once it makes a move proper to, I don't know, like, you know, $10, $15, I think it's all up from there, guys. I think as time moves on, it's got to basically start to climb. It's got to start to climb and it's gonna be gonna be some kind of ride, you know. Because you've got like competitors in that EV space. Neo's competitors, right? Like if you if you um, do the maths. Neo, if you work it out right, Neo really it should be well over ten dollars, somewhere between ten and ten and twenty dollars. But let's just say roughly about fifteen dollars, right? If you do the maths. So if you think about it, right, Neo is undervalued, in my opinion. So buying at four, four thirty, four forty, even at five dollars. You're getting a discount. You saw it. You saw it just a few weeks ago. It doubled, more or less, right? Well, it did double, didn't it? It was three. It was around about three seventy. So, you know, seven forty is a double. It went seven seventy. It was just over double, and that was just like that, as I said. So, obviously, it is cheap. The stock is cheap. If you think about the long term and obviously like you're going to get analysts bashing it because they want to buy in they want it cheaper they always want to keep it down as long as possible so that when neo stock you know when a neo company does become profitable that's when they want to load up right so they're holding it down bashing it talking you know bad about it Bashing it. In a way, they're a bit like those people I was telling you about, those new investors, the, you know, the big boys at the top, the analysts, the banks, the hedge funds, the big funds, right? The global elites, etc. right? They want to keep it down. They want to keep it down. They, don't, they haven't got the guts, right? They don't want to put their money in. They don't want to put their money in until they see movement, right? But at the same time, before before like Neo becomes profitable, they want to bash it down. They want to keep it low so they can load up at the right time at a cheap price. And that's what's going on, guys. That's what's going on. It's a game. They do it with a lot of stocks. And they can control it. They can control it, right, by shorting it. If they, if they, if there wasn't the ability to short stocks, to put pressure, right, on stocks, you would see natural progression, right? Neo stock probably be about thirty, forty dollars. And then if 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 there was like during the journey, you know, before they're profitable. If there was like panic selling, yeah, it would drop down naturally, but people would be selling their actual stock that they own, not shorting stock. 
you see Neo drop down to twenty dollars, fifteen dollars, and then go back up again, etc. But this is what the game is, right? This is what they do. They short the stocks, put pressure on them, keep them low, bash them, use the media, use their, you know, they get like top number one positions in Google and other search, you know, online search platforms. They've got the power but of the media, right? So they bash these stocks down. They, they, they basically, they pay analysts to bash it, right? And um, as I said, then when they see that Neo's going to become profitable, they load up. They buy as much as they can. And who gets left behind? The people... Right, you get two types. You get people that saying they were going to buy and then end up not buying, right? They're still waiting, still sitting on the fence when the, when the big boys have loaded up. And then the stock starts rising, right? And too late then for them. Well, they can still buy, but they're going to have to pay a higher price, right? And then you get people that buy cheap, but then when the stock rises, they sell out too early. So let's say they're buying Neo at five, uh, 450, say roughly, it's four, four, 440, whatever. It goes goes up to 480, down to 430, that's the range. But let's say they buy at 450, right? And then big boys load up, so they take off their shorts, they load up, the stock starts flying, goes up to twenty dollars they sell out on the way up they might not sell at twenty they might sell at ten right so as I said they sell out at ten fifteen whatever and then stock ends up going two hundred three hundred four hundred dollars in the future right and they sold out too early then they'd be saying oh I bought I bought Neo stock at 450. They'll be telling whoever in the future. I bought Neo stock at 450, and I sold it uh, ten dollars. Look at it now, 400, 500 dollars. They'll be telling the stories, right? So that's the that's the point, guys. That's the point. That Neo is not profitable now, but the money they've been losing, it's not. It's not money lost, it's not it's not losses per se, it's losses on paper, but they're assets, they're investments, they're not losses, right? You know, it's not like um, the things that can make money in the future, right? So takes time to come good and that's the, that's the thing guys it takes time to come good right so just work it out it's not financial advice but obviously it takes time just work it out and um, think about it think about the investments think about the investments anyway guys like the video share the video yeah, share the video on stock tweets, Yahoo conversations, because they, they banned me, right? Stock tweets banned me. I told you why. They're manipulators, right? They've got the back-end information. They're part of the system. They're part of the... You know, they do the same thing that I was just talking about. I don't want to go into it, right? But they don't like the truth. Yeah, so share it on stock tweets, show conversations, all trading platforms that have comments, you know, because um, they don't like the truth, right? If you tell if you tell the truth, you're a little bit smart, right? They block you. That's what they do. So you have to put the word out, get the word out, guys, right? If you're a neo holder, if you're a neo holder, you got to let people know that it's all manipulated. Neo's being bashed down. 
So people should have confidence to buy a Neo stock. They should have confidence to buy more Neo stock. Again, I'm not giving financial advice, right? But I've seen this before. You, you've seen it as well. You, you know, you should know, right? If you've been investing in trading stocks for several years, you've seen it all before, right? There's not many... I mean, you're right, there are some penny stocks that go under, but there's not many stocks that bad things happen to them, you know, bad sort of situations, whatever. So, yeah, just share the video, guys, and, and like the video, and um, look out for the next video, because I've got a big information. I've got a big, I've got a big video coming out soon, a lot of information. It's like, it'll blow your mind, guys. It'll blow your mind.